Welcome, my name is Stacy Morrigan. I am a solutions engineer for AEC Cloud here at Autodesk. And today we're here to look at getting started with Sheet Set Manager for Web inside of Civil 3D. On the screen here, you see the agenda for this session. We are going to start out by taking a Sheet Set template that you may have locally uh, saved or on a network saved somewhere, and we're going to get that up into the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Then we're going to use that template and create a new sheet set on the cloud. From there, we'll import some sheets into the Sheet Set Manager. We'll review, modify, and create some custom properties. We're also going to attach some support files like a CTB or STB that you use for publishing or plotting. And finally, we will publish a single and multiple documents with our plot styles that are assigned. I just want to point out to you today that this is all live. I'm recording as I walk through each step of the workflow. So you get to experience the same response times as I do. So there's no surprises when you're going through this workflow on your own. So first things first, let me hop out of this um, a PowerPoint session and what I want to do is go into my Windows File Explorer because what I want to show you is the current template that I have saved on my local data drive. I have a Civil 3D templates folder here and in that templates folder I've got a default sheet set manager, maybe a non-web sheet set manager. I'm going to open up this default sheet set manager locally so you can see what that interface looks like. On uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud, I also have a project here under my SM Consulting. I've got a separate resource project. You can have these resources however you prefer to organize it. For my purposes, I have a separate resource location and in that resource location, I have things stored like fonts or templates and plot styles, etc. So I'm going to open it up from this locally uh, saved location so you can see what it looks like and then we're going to copy and paste it using desktop connector 16.2.2007 uh, so there is the version of desktop connector that I'm going to be using as well as civil 3d 2023.2.2 uh, update when we get there so first things first let's go ahead and open up civil 3d 2023 Again, here is the version that I'm working with inside of Civil 3D on all the associated built-on applications. From here, I'm just going to open up uh, a new drawing from scratch uh, out of the box template because I want to go into the Sheet Set Manager and I'm going to go ahead and open from my data drive in those Civil 3D template folder that I have stored. Remember I mentioned that I had the default and the non-web. Just going to open up this default here real quickly. As you can see, I've got several subsets already created. Uh, I can import my sheets here. This is all the the locally or network drive location. This is the non-web version of Sheet Set Manager. And if I were to right click on that and go to properties, you'll notice that I have a plethora of uh, custom sheet properties as well as sheet set properties that are part of this default sheet set um, template or DST file that I have. So I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to go back into File Explorer here just so you can see how quick and easy it is to copy and paste from your local uh, location or network drive somewhere. I am going to copy this default uh, SSM DST. So I'm just going to do a quick copy. And again, I'm in this Autodesk Docs SM Consulting Resources underneath my CAD standards. I've got this template folder, same location here. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to paste. And what you're going to see is the desktop connector goes ahead and starts uploading my Sheet Set Manager by default. Once that's done uploading, then you see I've got this green check mark here, so I'm good to go. Inside of Civil 3D, I'm going to go back to that open, and this time, instead of opening from this data drive desk, I'm going to go to my Autodesk Docs. I'm going to go into my SM Consulting underneath that resources project that I have, and I'm going to take a look at my CAD standards and go to those templates. Right there's that default Sheet Set Manager DST that I was working with. If I were to open that, uh, I would get the same version. Uh, of that default SSM, only this time I'm going to see a slightly different user interface and that lets me know that I am now working on the Sheet Set Manager uh, for web version. So there's all my Sheet Set properties as I can expect to see and all my subsets, etc. 
I'm going to close out of this because I want to create a new sheet set based on that as a template. So I'm going to close out of the sheet set manager. That's how we close a sheet set that's on the web. And I'm going to go back to this open and I'm going to choose new sheet set. This time I'm going to choose a cloud example sheet set. And I'm going to choose next here. And the name of my sheet set, I'm going to call this one Locust Valley. And I could give it a description if I want to. So I'm going to choose that sheet set template here. <clears throat> and I'm going to choose the folder location. So underneath my resources, I'm in my project file and my CAD standards. And I'm going to drill down to that templates folder. And I'm going to choose the DST, default SSM DST. And if I select that one, Next, I'm asked to select the location to save this new DST file. I've got this project here, Locust Valley, that I'm going to use in the publish folder. I, I have some uh, information already stored here. This is where all my layouts and my sheet drawings are, are located. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check on that publish folder, and that's where I want to save that DST file. You can choose any location, your DWG sheets, and your DST do not have to be stored in the same location. I'm just doing that for organizational purposes. And now as you can see, there's my Locust Valley DST file, all my subsets that I saw from the default sheet set manager, and all of my sheet and sheet set custom properties and properties that I have here. So I'm going to go ahead and click create. And again, we just want to give it a few seconds. We can see what's happening here for the inside of the desktop connector. We can also go back into our uh, view inside of the TAC project file. I'm going to just navigate to this publish folder. And there you see that I've got that Locust Valley DST file that now has a lock on it. It is saved to the cloud. Next, what I'm going to do is I am, uh, so just want to show you that if I right click on the Locust Valley, I can create a new subset right here. I can also remove that subset if I wanted to. So if I right click on that, I'm going to remove that subset. Up at the very top here, I also have some additional right click menus like adding a new sheet, importing a sheet, auto renumbering or auto numbering, publishing to PDF, as well as e-transmit. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to import the sheets. Uh, also here at the very bottom of my sheet set view, you can see I've got my sheet set properties, my project control, and I also have some custom sheet set properties as well as my custom sheet properties that came over from that local version. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import some of my layouts from those sheet drawings. So again, I'm in that publish folder. I'm just going to check on all of my DWGs there and select those. And it's going to go ahead and extract those layouts for me to select and import into my sheet set manager as I would expect it to. So I'm going to go ahead and write uh, or hold down the shift key so I could select all of those at the same time. And then at the very top, it lets me know that my importing sheets has succeeded or was successful. So uh, I'm now going to just click and drag and move some of these sheets around into my subsets. Uh, so I can move them inside the subsets, outside of the subsets. I can reorganize inside of the subset. So now that I have my sheets, imported into my sheet set. Let's take a look at some of these custom properties that we have created. So we've got some custom sheet set properties and custom sheet properties. Uh, let me just actually double click on one of these drawings to go ahead and open it. So right from the sheet set manager, I can double click on any one of my sheets and it will open. As you can see, I've got a number of fields here in my title block already, and those come from those custom sheet and sheet set properties. So if I were to go into the CS1001, since I'm there, I want to go into the custom sheet properties and uh, approved by first, middle, last, I'm going to choose SMM. Let's see, the drawing date today is May 8th. 2023. Uh, my drawing scale, I'll say that's 50 foot. It was drawn by me and I'll let that go for a second. 
and then sheet title, sheet number, I'm just going to enter in all that information. And then if I come back into my drawing space here and just do a regenerate all, you'll notice how my sheet updates. So does all of my drawing scale and date and maybe the project number information. So all of my fields update uh, with changes made to the properties of the sheet set manager. Right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up to this Locust Valley here and you see how we've got sheet set properties. If I click this little plus symbol next to the sheet set properties, I can create a new sheet set property or a new sheet property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, a new sheet set property and I'm going to enter the property name of, let's say, file uh, reference number. Okay, and then I'm also going to, if I don't like that, I can right click on that and remove it if I want to. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and create a new sheet property and I'm going to call that sheet file number. Again, the same thing. If I right click, I can remove that if I wish to or I can continue to add. Now the one thing in order to make sure that our sheet set properties can then be created. So if I copy one of my fields here and I double click inside of that field or if I create a new M text and I select my M text and I right click to edit or update that field. The one thing that you're going to notice is that you have to uh, close out of this sheet set, let it index in order for it to uh, recognize those custom sheet and sheet set properties. Then you will be able to edit your field and update your field. So I am going to close out of this sheet set just so you could see um, how quickly it regenerates uh, or updates. And when I go to open up that sheet set again, I want to make sure that I'm on my docs, my SM consulting for my TAC project. Since now I'm inside of that project, there's my Locust Valley. And I'm going to go ahead and open that. And let's take a look at our sheet and sheet set custom properties. So here's our custom sheet set properties. And if I scroll down here, there's that file reference number. And if I continue to scroll, there's my custom sheet property, which at the um, very bottom there, since it's alphabetical, I'll see that sheet file number. So now if I were to create, uh, let's say I just create some M text in here and I call this the file number. So let me just right click and insert that field. As you can see from that sheet set, if I head on over to that Locust Valley, right there's my file reference number. So I can go ahead and enter that for my file reference number. If I come back up to my custom sheet property and enter in my file reference number of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine. There we go and come over to my sheet and do a regenerate all. There is my file reference number. The next thing I want to do is apply my support file location. Right now it's set to a default. So if I were to go and plot this, I'm looking for that standard NCS STB file in order to plot. If I were to plot this sheet right from the sheet set manager right now, what would happen is that on my web version, without a plot style, I would get a PDF that just shows all the color base, which is fine if that's what you're looking for. However, what I'm looking for is a PDF that has my plot style already assigned to it. So in order to assign those plot styles, we need to make sure that we're pathing the appropriate support file location. So again, I'm just gonna go back here into uh, my docs location so you can see that in my plot styles location I already have that standard NCS. I've got my templates here for all of my different sheets. All of my folders are organized under just CAD standards and that is where I'm going to path my support file location. So if I click on that and choose browse you don't have to worry about keeping everything uh, underneath one folder, you can stay organized if I choose that resources folder rather than uh, choose just that plot styles folder uh, because maybe when I go to create a new sheet, I want it to pick up the templates uh, or the sheet templates that's in this template folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back one folder and I'm going to say all my CAD standards that you're going to need are in this CAD standards 
uh, folder and subfolders, and Civil 3D and Sheet Set Manager for Web will find the appropriate uh, templates that it needs during those given uh, commands. So if I go ahead and hit select there, now what you're noticing at the very top there is that it's indexing all of my sheets. So what it's doing is going ahead and applying that support file location to each one of my uh, sheet drawings that's in my sheet set manager. Once that's done, you'll get this green checkbox at the very top to let you know that everything's good to go. So now that we're done indexing, what we can do is click on one of these sheets. Let's click on this one since we're in there. And let's go ahead and publish to PDF. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate PDF for each individual page. I'm going to call this file name CS1001 because that is the name of my sheet drawing. And I'm storing it in that publish location or publish folder. If I wanted to save it in a different location, I can always choose a different location to store those PDFs in. Maybe you have a separate folder in your project that you want to publish uh, all of your sheets to. So what I'm expecting is that at the very top there, I get a notification, just an information to let me know that the publish is currently in progress. Once that publish is complete, then I'll see a green check mark there at the very top to let me know that that publish is complete. I can also expect to see that PDF file uh, inside of my uh, project file here, I'll be able to see that PDF that'll show up, that CS1001 PDF that'll appear, and it will also appear um, online here. Uh, so that way I can take a look at it. So multiple PDFs or separate PDFs for each individual file will show up as a zip folder, but that's okay. Once uh, we can use our... So we can use our desktop connector application to look inside of that zip folder. We see that that's the CS5. There's right click commands now in Autodesk Docs. So we could cut it out of this zip file, put it back in this publish folder and paste it right here in this publish folder. So we don't have to extract the zip file or do anything fancy online. Um, we can just uh, extract that zip file using the file explorer and if I go back into my uh, web version of this project you'll see I've got this PDF now uh, I could probably remove that zip folder if I wanted to I no longer need that so I'll just go ahead and delete that and once that finishes processing and I click on it what you will notice yeah, we need to let it finish processing but what you will notice is that now I will have this sheet with that plot style attached. So let's go ahead and click on that and there is my sheet 5 CS1001 PDF with the plot styles uh, associated plot styles already assigned. So now I can do a compare version from the previous uh, I can see what those other versions are or close out of that or just view that PDF. Today we looked at how we could get started using Sheet Set Manager for the web by getting our Sheet Set template up into the cloud. Then we created a new Sheet Set using that template from the cloud or that cloud template. We also reviewed our sheet set and sheet properties, our custom properties, and applied them to a field. We imported some of those uh, DWG, imported those sheet layout tabs into our sheet set manager on the web. We also modified those sheet properties and updated it in the drawings to see that update in real time. We also attached our support files so that way we could publish single and multiple documents. Thanks for joining me this session. I hope you found this helpful for using Sheet Set Manager for web on your next project.